Welcome or welcome back to Midnight Archives. We journey into the abyss where urban legends breathe, the paranormal beckons, and fear finds its home. Join our community of brave souls by liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell. As the midnight hour approaches, the archives await your presence. Let's begin. Tonight, we will be unveiling more urban legends from Manila, Philippines. If you thought part one was a wild ride through the mysteries of this vibrant city, you're in for an even bigger treat with part two. Now, for our returning viewers, get ready to be mesmerized as we continue our exploration into Manila's terrifying urban legends. Mananangal and Tondao. This is no ordinary tale. It's an extraordinary story that doesn't unfold every day. The mysterious Mananangal, typically a resident of the provinces, had surprisingly ventured into the city, sending waves of unease through the urban populace. Perhaps this unexpected incursion contributed to a mild form of mass hysteria. First story. In one version of the story, this Mananangal found herself on a ship bound for Sekihor, but somehow ended up stranded in the bustling city of Manila. While some accounts suggest a shipwreck as the cause, the true origins of this monstrous visitor's arrival remain shrouded in mystery. According to reports from the Chicago Tribune, pregnant women dared not venture out during the late hours of the night, fearing that their unborn children might fall victim to this creature. In Tondo, residents took precautions by keeping garlic within their homes, even fashioning garlic bunches into makeshift belts for added protection. Second story. It was May, the month of the presidential elections, in 1992, when the people of Tondo, Manila, were thrust into a state of terror. They claimed to have witnessed a female Mananan gale prowling the streets at night, hunting for unsuspecting victims. This chilling news, published in a tabloid, nearly eclipsed the coverage of the upcoming election day, capturing the fascination of Filipinos on multiple fronts. The tale began to circulate following an article in the Daily News, featuring an interview with a local woman named Martina Santa Rosa. She recounted her chilling encounter with the monster, describing it as follows. She attacked me. I was just lucky I was able to get free. I saw half of her body. It was naked. She had long, scraggly hair, long arms, nails, and sharp fangs. A neighbor named Mr. Alfonso Bernardo supported the account, adding, we saw it fly away from her house. The woman at the center of the controversy was Teresita Barranqui, whom locals accused of being the fearsome monster. An angry mob, accompanied by television crews, descended upon her home. During an interview with ABS, CBN, an elderly Barranqui, tears in her eyes, pleaded her innocence. She even displayed her missing toes as evidence, claiming that she, too, had been attacked by the creature. However, a self-proclaimed vampire expert following an interrogation declared her claims false. Another vampire expert was summoned to provide insight into the Mananangal attack. According to him, the accused woman was indeed a vampire, but had reverted to her normal form after the last attack. However, when asked to explain her missing toe, he confidently stated that she had failed to fully complete her transformation. In a subsequent interview conducted to ascertain the truth about her vampire nature, reporter Cesar Sariano produced a dried stingray tail, a well-known tool for repelling these kinds of monsters. Yet, when the accused woman touched it, she reported feeling nothing amiss, only the rough texture of the object. This inconsistency raised doubts about her alleged vampiric nature. Fact check. In the midst of the panic surrounding the Mananangal's presence in the city, some observers suggested that these stories were perpetuated to maintain order. Throughout history, the Mananangal legend had been employed to encourage piety during the Spanish era. In the 1950s, Americans were believed to have propagated the tale in rural areas to motivate locals to report strangers, potentially rebel insurgents. Thus, the presence of a Mananangal 
In Tondo may have been a strategic attempt to quell nightly disturbances in the neighborhood, as the fear of encountering such a creature discouraged even the bravest from venturing out after dark. As a megamal madman with AIDS, a disturbing rumor suggests that a man with AIDS intentionally injected moviegoers with his infected blood at Esa Megamall. Story tied. During the 1990s, a startling tale circulated about an individual carrying a syringe filled with AIDS, HIV, positive blood, targeting moviegoers at Esa Megamall. Some claim to have heard accounts from individuals who knew victims of this alleged assailant. The modus operandi typically involved the person sitting next to a solitary moviegoer, surreptitiously pricking them with a needle and leaving behind chilling notes such as welcome to my world, or congratulations, you're one of us. In the case of shoppers, the assailants would stand or sit nearby, administering an injection with the infected needle before swiftly fleeing, often leaving behind the haunting words, happy living. Variations. Number one, in certain renditions, the individual was described as wearing a baseball cap or a hooded jacket. Number two, some versions of the story claimed that the assailant would emit an evil laugh each time they injected a victim. Strangely, no one reported seeing the individual fleeing the scene. They seemed to vanish into the darkness. Number three, an alternate version involved the man injecting HIV-positive blood into ketchup dispensers at fast food chains. Number four, another twist implicated a woman, purportedly an SM employee, who, after losing her job, sought revenge by leaving needles on cinema seats, intending to infect anyone who sat on that. Fact check. It's highly likely that anti-Megamal groups collaborated to disseminate this story, which, interestingly, isn't exclusive to this location. In fact, this urban legend has been reported on an international scale. Manila Bay, Magbalsa Kukulam, Graft Witches. Folklore has woven its tales around Manila Bay since long before the era of Spanish colonization. One of these myths introduces us to the Magbalsa Kukulam, or raft witches. These enigmatic figures make their presence known at the stroke of midnight. Comprising both men and women, the raft witches can be observed skillfully maneuvering a raft at remarkable speeds while quenching their thirst with seawater. Some accounts suggest the Magbalsa Kukulam may be linked to the mysterious toxicity of the Pasig River. The Story Upon the placid waters of Manila Bay, and the milky white surface of the Pasig River. One may occasionally encounter rafts adorned with fresh green branches or, on rarer occasions, entire trees drifting aimlessly with the current. In extraordinary moments, these rafts defy convention, swiftly navigating the water's expanse, even propelling upstream or against the tide. As the moonlight casts its glow, popular explanation attributes these uncanny occurrences to the presence of the Magbalsa Kukulam, slender individuals who draw sustenance from seawater and remain concealed from plain sight. Their passage leaves behind a milky residue that bestows upon the Pasig River its opaque sheen and, some believe, its deadly properties. Our journey ends for now, but remember, there's always more darkness to explore. If you want more scary stories and mysteries, join our community. Hit that subscribe button and keep uncovering the secrets hiding just beyond what we can see. Until next time, stay curious, stay brave. Good night.